this section is on annuities and we have here annuities consists of regular payments and the idea behind the regular payments are equal amounts and equal time periods so maybe maybe the regular payments are every month the idea is equal amounts equal time periods the annu the word annuity itself though is a sum of a series of regular payments up up until now uh, we've been talking about compound interest and simple interest as arithmetic and geometric sequences but now this is the first encounter with a series so an annuity is a sum of a series of regular payments and uh, this can be illustrated using a timeline an ordinary annuity is where the payments are made at the end of a pay period and a simple annuity is where the compounding and payment periods are the same so most of the time we'll be spending our time discussing ordinary simple annuities so what we have here can be the result of a simple substitution so the first term in the series is just r well if we're working in this direction the first term in the series will be r right but the uh, the common ratio which should be this r this lowercase r is actually uh, 1 plus i so we need to the common ratio is 1 plus i so we've got to keep that in mind and that means that basically s of n becomes r big r times and this is going to be 1 plus i this is our little r to the power n take away 1 and this is going to be 1 plus i take away 1. Now if we take away the brackets on the bottom in the way of simplification notice on the bottom here we can take away the brackets because it's just adding and subtracting. Let's just do that. This one's a little harder to do because we have an exponent here, but we can do it on the bottom. So we'll just copy this down. 1 plus i to the n take 1 divided by 1 plus i minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. We're left with nothing more than i on the bottom. So this becomes uh, the total amount paid in annuities this can also be called the future value because this will be the the value at the end at the end of all the payments uh, in the future so first of all how do we get the formula for future value and what does this have to do with the timeline it appears as though well if we try out the timeline calculation which we are about to do in this video we will get the same value as we would get from the formula for future value. That's one way of showing that, hey, they both work, but where does this formula for future value come from? And by extension, you could also extend this discussion to present value as well. The future value of an annuity. Ron invests $100 per month in an investment returning 5% interest per year compounded monthly. How much will Ron's investment be worth in six months? Now, so for that we find the interest rate per compounding period, which effectively means per month. In the question we're given the interest rate compounded per year, but we want the interest rate per month. So we have basically the annual interest rate, 5% per year, which we'll express as a decimal, divided by 12. 0 0.05 divided by 12, we get, we can say 0 0.00417, and that'll take us through uh, this calculation. The only thing is, when we're trying to figure out interest rate added to something, it's like <laughs> computing sales tax. So really we have to add one to this decimal, which has the same effect as adding um, adding the interest, uh, or sorry, it has the effect of calculating the interest and at the same time adding that interest that's calculated back to the principal amount. Each time we make an investment, each month that Ron makes an investment, he adds $100 more to his principal. So, it's another principle of which a separate interest rate has to be calculated. Well, okay, so, so the common ratio, which we'll call R, is going to be 1 plus this number, right? 
this is your this is your interest rate. This is really 0.4 of 1%. That's a very small number, but it ends up being 1.00417. You just add one to this number, and you end up with the common ratio. This, this is what we call the common ratio. We multiply the, each month's $100 investment by this ratio raised to a power because, you know, over one month, uh, we'll have one month's worth of interest calculated. Two months, you'll have two months' worth of interest calculated, which means it's this squared. And three months, you'll have this cubed, and so on. So we go back to our timeline. Six months is right at maturity, so we don't we don't have interest calculated there. That's right at the end. And notice that every investment will be at the end of a compounding period. There will not be an investment made on year, on years on month zero, but on month one there will be, month two there will be, each of the six months there will be. The idea is to find the sum of this column. Notice that the last term is 100. It's the simplest term. And uh, if we work backwards, we can call that the first term. And notice that every successive term, working backwards, is bigger than the last one by a factor of 1.00417. So we can call that the common ratio. And now we can see the sum of the series expressed in dollars and cents to be $606.29. Now, <coughs> let's check what I just did. Um, I have here for my geometric series a symbol SN. S stands for sum. N is really the number of terms to add. So when I say S6, I mean I, I wish to add six terms. And are there six terms in the addition? One two, three, four, five, six. Remember a term is defined as basically numbers and products and quotients separated by plus and minus signs. At least that's how I describe it. If I have S6, I really end up with the same sequence as I have here, right? These are the same, right? I add those up, I get this. And I'll end up with $606.29. Now, what if I add both, add, what if I multiply both sides by the interest rate 1.00417? That means that the 100 is multiplied by 1.00417 to make this number. This number here is multiplied by 1.00417 to make 100 times 1.00417 squared. So that means that the pattern is that every term gets converted to one term ahead of it in the previous sequence, right? Up here, you notice these are identical, and that's the way I line them up. The only one, the only terms that are different is the 100 over here, which doesn't occur in this sequence, and in the second sequence, the 100 times 1.00417 to the power 6, which actually occurs in the second sequence, but not in the first. Really, it's just 100 minus this term. That's really what we have. So if I give myself more room here, S6 subtract 1.00417 S6 is really equal to 100 take away 100 times 1.00417 uh, uh, to the power 6. Okay, now let's factor. I can factor S6 out of here because it's common on this side. So I get S6 outside of 1 minus 1.00417. And over here, 100 is common. I can factor out 100 from that. And I have 1 minus 1 times this number raised to the 6th, 1.00417 raised to the 6th. Okay. Now, notice the only unknown, notice the only unknown in this calculation is S sub 6, S with the 6 on the bottom. Let's try doing this calculation on a calculator. 
So now we have something we can enter in a fraction. So we have 100 multiplied by, in brackets, 1, subtract 1.00417 to the power 6, close the bracket, and then go to the bottom, and I go 1 minus 1.00417. I hit equals, and I get exactly what I got before, um, $606.29. So what I've done here is I've reduced the formula to a geometric series. So really what we've been doing is we've been sneaking this on you. And when we plug in the terms, we said that the first term was A, the first term is 100, and that's where we put our 100, right? So we end up with this. The common ratio is 1.00417, and that's where that goes. It goes in each of these R's, and N is just the number of terms, which is six. Okay, so just to sort of put this side by side and put it all together. And this is how we get uh, six hundred and six dollars and twenty nine cents. That that is what we calculated here uh, using our calculator. Well, geometric series also directly applies to finance. So basically, what works in a geometric series as a sum of n terms also works as the future value of an investment, where there's regular payments made every month or regular payments made during a compounding period. Maybe you're investing quarterly or semi-annually or whatever. But you're, you're investing in this problem. We invested every month, or Ron invested every month. And this has to be multiplied by the same deal as up here, 1 minus r to the n. In this case, r is the interest rate divided by the number of months plus 1, right? So that, that's how we got 1.00417. So it's 1 minus 1.00417 to the power n. Well, what's n? It's 6, okay? Because it's 6 terms. So, uh, 6 in, in finance terms, it's 6 compounding periods. And that's divided by 1 minus r. Once that's done, you can see that you'll actually get the same numbers because really these are very similar equations where a is the first term in a geometric series. Well, this is your regular payment in an investment. And SN is the sum of six terms, whereas really that's just called the future value in finance. So uh, very, very similar. Uh, and really the future value simply comes from the sum of the geometric series.